Hey, welcome to the Zero Budget Film School. I'm John Inge from Mars Rising Films, and I figured this would be a good topic to start off with. You know, today I talk to a lot of filmmakers who get caught up in the minutia of the right way and the wrong way to make a movie, and I think that really holds us back as filmmakers. We should embrace our creative freedom that we have these days, and really push ourselves to do everything we can with what we have. Back in the 90s when Kevin Smith, Quentin Tarantino, and Robert Rodriguez all got their start, things were very different. They all worked on film for their breakthrough projects, everybody was working on film. Now we can shoot something that looks better, we can shoot it faster and more efficiently, and we can do the entire thing with minimal investment and do all the editing effects from home. So why haven't we heard the story about the kid from Nebraska who shot his entire amazing action flick on a DSLR for the cost of food, for the cast, and band-aids? Now, Tarantino did Reservoir Dogs on what I'd consider a Hollywood budget because of some luck in getting his script to Harvey Keitel, so I won't talk too much about him, but Kevin Smith made Clerks for $27,000 because of insurance claims from a flood that destroyed two cars in his garage and by selling his comic book collection. Rodriguez used the town where he and his buddy Carlos Gallardo, the original mariachi, grew up. He borrowed a friend's camera, used a still camera tripod, refused to spend money, and instead of developing his film, he transferred the negative to three quarter inch video and just went for it. But many of us, including me on occasion, get caught up in the minutia of what's right versus what's wrong. If Kevin Smith had said a black and white film is not commercially viable, and certainly not on 16 millimeter, I have to shoot on 35 millimeter in color, or I'm not gonna risk it. He'd probably still be in Jersey folding papers at 5 a.m. Today, with DSLRs and all the easily attainable resources at our disposal, I've seen some amazingly insane arguments on why not to make a movie. People are so afraid of doing it wrong and they say it won't look right. I call bullshit. That argument comes down to fear. Fear that your peers won't think your piece is as good as the latest blockbuster. Fear that you will look like you don't know what you're doing. Fear that someone is gonna stand up in the back of the room and shout, wait a minute, you're full of shit. I know. I've been plagued by these fears myself. A friend of mine once told me that the only way to get over fear is to run toward it. So for me, this means going out and doing the best I can with what I have and embracing that my images aren't gonna look like they were DP'd by Roger Deakins. And let me ask you this. Are you making your movie for your filmmaker buddies or for a movie going audience? Doug Lyman, who directed Swingers, told the cast that most of their friends in LA were trying to make movies. They were actually making a movie. So they shouldn't be ashamed of anything they have on set that doesn't look professional. In fact, they should have at least one thing on each set that would embarrass most filmmakers. And I like that. Maybe because I can be pretty embarrassing. The thing that made Clerks, El Mariachi, and Reservoir Dogs so amazing was not their camera work, was not their lighting, or their craft services table. Okay, maybe Clerks had the ultimate craft services table. But it was the stories that set these movies apart. Those directors all knew how to craft a story. So if you have a good story, why let those little things get in your way? There's a guy who went to Sundance this year. He made an entire feature film on an iPhone. iPhone! Making a movie is hard under the best of circumstances. And yes, you're gonna goof it up. It's tough to balance filmmaking, your day job, all of your cast and crew's lives, etc. But that's no reason not to try. Robert Rodriguez says that everyone has about, what was it? 20 bad movies in them, so go get them out of the way. Go shoot some shorts. Throw them up on YouTube. Don't be afraid to mess up. In fact, embrace your mistakes. Make your battle cry. Let's go out there and f up. Don't try to be Spielberg from the get-go. Well, try to be Spielberg, but allow yourself room to goof up. Then learn from your mistakes and go do another one and another one until you're comfortable with the process. I've seen a lot of filmmakers who had decent money blow it all in their ill-conceived feature their first time around. The movie goes nowhere and they're left standing there in debt. Get used to visual storytelling before you go out and try to craft a feature. For most of my time making films for this YouTube channel, my gear setup has been a tripod, a Canon 7D, three lenses that came with the package and one that I borrowed, an indie focus follow focus that I eventually broke, and oh, a few lights that I picked up here and there, uh, some of which are construction lights, which I'm using to light me right now. Do I get lens flares? <laughs> you bet. Is it hard to track shots? Oh yeah. How do I get cinematic shots? I have to think around them. I once said to a producer, I wanna do the shot, but I need a jib arm to do it. And he replied, I can get you a ladder. My wheels spun, and because I'd done so many tests and had to make do with what I had, it took me about 10 seconds to figure out I could take my craptastic still cr camera tripod, climb on a ladder, and lower it by hand. I knew if I needed, I could always stabilize a shot in After Effects later. So don't let the little things stop you from seeing your project through. Go out there and do it. 
That's how you learn. And with every project, you will learn more and more and more. So hey, if you like this video, share it with your friends. And if you want to see more, go to our Patreon and donate a few bucks. Thanks for listening. See you next week. That didn't work out. <laughs>